execs are calling it the journey to cashless. First of all, I'd like to say that, that we always had a disruption. It's just, it never was so disruptive as it is uh, these days. And there is a reason for that. We have the same problem with cell phones. Um, you know, uh, if we're, it's, it's kind of crazy today that we live quite uh, comfortably in, in, a, in a world that George Orwell would have thought it's super crazy. So what, what do we say to, to those who say, you know what, listen, privacy is out the door. Everything's about convenience right now and forsaking privacy is worth it given the convenience of devices like Alexa. You, you say, well, then you should be happy. I mean, those kind of people, they, they're loving life right now because we are constantly giving up privacy and we are only going to give up more privacy because we're entering an era of artificial intelligence. Elon might be proof that time travel exists because he, he seems to have uh, either more hours than the, in the day than the rest of us have or, 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 or you know, or he's from the future. Um, he's just, uh, uh, in, in all seriousness, I'm, I'm laughing because his ability to think um, cogently and thoughtfully about such a wide range of topics while running uh, these multiple companies and seeming to be running them well is just, I mean, it's like it makes you shake your head. Like we, we, we all carry um, a phone with a, with, with a microphone that can be turned on really at any time with our knowledge with a GPS that knows our position um, and a camera um, and uh, well, kind of all of our personal information. Um, we do this um, willingly um, and uh, it's kind of wild to think that that's the case. To get that data everywhere, they have to invade your privacy in all kinds of ways. So we have this constant trade-off. For convenience and for innovation, we give up our privacy. Issuing an alert this week that some so-called smart toys may be spying on your kids. Even though these toys may be a lot of fun, they may be very educational, they may also the dark side. A sad sign of the times when even toys intended to educate can make trouble. A sad sign of the times. But the way privacy and technology work is we just give it up as time goes on. So eventually they'll record more and they'll sell it to more places. But that will use this data, whether or not they're large corporations or governments, to undermine our privacy, which is the foundation of a free society. Well, I, I was kind of shocked in reviewing the state of things to realize that these had all occurred. The digital age has brought us many wonders but when you look at the bottom line of how it's impacted our economy and society, it's a troubling report. Warns using it on air travelers could be a dangerous step toward building a more powerful surveillance infrastructure on Americans. There's a pretty good chance that over time, if we don't put in place checks and balances um, and, and really you know, stop the application of this powerful surveillance technology on Americans, it will inevitably expand to other things. So the problem is here that we seem to be forgetting just how much information we share, as we add it bit by bit in what I like to call data crumbs. Sure, that one picture you upload doesn't say a lot, but don't forget that this information com is combined. And when it is, it provides an incredibly in-depth picture into your life. is leading the charge toward a cashless culture by connecting with electric race cars speeding through New York City. We're already sharing biometric data with our phones, such as face scans and fingerprints, in order to unlock them, as well as some basic medical data. And let me warn you, we're entering a, a period of time where it's more valuable 
and sometimes even cheaper to store your data instead of delete it. And it's actively being used to train modern systems such as artificial intelligence. Uh, let's uh, talk about Elon Musk for a second then. I have exposure to the very, the very most cutting edge um, AI. Um, uh, and I think people should be really concerned about it. Um, I keep so sounding the alarm bell. When it comes to the rest of us, um, Google says that we've only got time until 2030 when robots can match human intelligence. So I invited a special guest today to help me with the opening. So, wake up my little friend. All right, he's with us. So, could you tell us who you are? I am not Leverness. Now, I know you are not Leverness. Leverness is standing here. So, what's your name and why are you here? My name is Nell. And I wanted to tell you all that my younger cousins are getting ready to conquest the world. Hmm. Really? My computer, that, 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 that computer would either never beat the best human player or that it was 20 years away. Um, and last year, um, uh, AlphaGo, which was done by DeepMind, which is a kind of a Google subsidiary, um, absolutely crushed the world's best player. Um, and now, now, but now I can crush, I can play the top 50 simultaneously and crush them all. So, just like, that pace of progress is remarkable. So, you saw the movie, what is going on around the world? We have a major migration, a lot of millions of people fleeing uh, war and uh, injustice. We have a climate change that is uh, causing natural disasters in different parts of the world. We have, as you heard, a rapid urbanization. Actually, 200,000 people every day move into urban areas globally. The problems today are more global, and this means there is no way any country can solve them by itself and we need global answers. The Agenda 2030 is an agenda aiming at a fair globalization. ID2020 is a global strategic initiative aiming to help deliver against the United Nations sustainable goal of legal identity for all. The Supreme Court has ruled that the right to privacy is not a fundamental right, but look at today's day and age, it's all digitized, all the information you don't have a choice, and you're, but you're going there voluntarily. This is not that. This is something far more dangerous. We are in something like a digital emergency, where the state or the government is taking all your data and linking it to everything else. When you buy an air ticket, a rail ticket, a ration card, a passport, a, a scholarship, whatever you do, all, they are all being compulsively taken. It started as voluntary, now it is mandatory, and it's everywhere. So we're at one of those weird turning points, once again, in human history, where we're, we're going to get another kick at the can to rewrite the economic power grid and to make a world that's more peer-to-peer -peer and that's more just and that's more transparent. What an exciting time to be alive. Its attendance was off the charts, the largest participation ever at an NGA meeting. AI is a fundamental risk to the existence of human civilization. Um, in a way that car accidents, uh, airplane crashes, um, faulty drugs, uh, or bad food were, were not. They were, not, they, they were harmful to, to uh, a set of individuals within society, of course, but they were not harmful to society as a whole. Um, AI is a fundamental existential risk for human civilization, and I don't think people fully appreciate that. We give them a set of rules and they follow them. In this instance, and we're talking 10, 10 to 20 years away, I mean, for true artificial intelligence, um, it's going to be a very different place.
I, it's like the, it's the, like it, this is really like the scariest problem to me, I have to tell you. Um, and um, yeah, so I really think we need to go regularly. First of all, I'd like to say that, that we always had a disruption. It's just, it never was so disruptive as it is uh, these days. And there is a reason for that. Uh, the reason uh, for that is that disruption has become digital. Eight ABSO conference. The old world disrupted.